This is the Met Gala. Only the biggest celebrities from around the world are invited, but I'm gonna attempt to attend undercover and pull off the juiciest heist of the year, stealing the secrets of the rich and famous. The plan is simple. While the stars are busy posing on the red carpet, I will be inside the world's most exclusive party, preparing to get the scoop that the paparazzi could only dream of catching on camera. It's gonna be like a celebrity aquarium filled with movie stars, pop stars, politicians, TikTokers, and hopefully Hopefully me if all goes according to plan. I think a lot of people view the Met Gala like Halloween for rich people. Except instead of giving out candy, they just wear it. And then Twitter spends the next week tearing them all apart for daring to try on something original. But very little is known about what happens beyond the red carpet at the actual gala, which I find far more intriguing. Guests are strictly forbidden from posting on social media from inside, and I want to find out what it is that's so exclusive. The New York Times reported that in 2021, it was a private Justin Bieber concert, attendees have joked that it's a gathering of the Illuminati, and others insist that it's a fashion show. <laughs> The only way to know for sure is to find out myself. But one question remains. How am I gonna get into the Met Gala? <laughs> Each May, it's held behind closed doors inside the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York City. And I'd have to either get extremely famous very quick, or become the literal Monopoly man to get on the guest list. Admission to this year's gala allegedly costs $50,000 for a single seat. And that's if you're invited. But the high price tag is what keeps it exclusive to fashion icons and A-list celebrities. I hardly know the difference between Champion and Chanel. So it's not very likely that I'm gonna be invited. However, that's not gonna stop me from trying to find another way inside. With so many high profile people attending, security is gonna be tight, which means that I'll need to find a way in that doesn't involve trying to sneak past guards or doing anything illegal. So I turned to a promising new AI chatbot for advice, and it immediately suggested that I do something illegal. The Met Gala is held inside of a museum. Wearing a suit of armor would camouflage you with the art. Unfortunately, I can't risk attending in my one-star night costume held together by packing tape, so I decided to explore more legitimate avenues into the Met Gala. I found an article with nine ways to get an invite to the Met Gala, and it has some brilliant suggestions like be Beyonce and be closely related to Anna Wintour, who's the editor-in-chief at Vogue and the mastermind behind the Met Gala. She curates pretty much every detail of the event, including who gets an invite. But let's be real, if you're not like a super popular IT celebrity, you're not gonna make the cut. I may not actually be an IT celebrity, but every day people leave comments in my videos saying, you look just like Harry Styles. Are you Harry Styles? Harry Styles' brother? Harry Styles from Wish? And considering that at last year's gala, everyone mistook this man for Jared Leto despite looking nothing like him. Maybe it's not so crazy to think that if I put on a pair of high-waisted trousers, gave a couple of unintelligible quotes on the red carpet... You know, my favorite thing about the movie is like, it feels like a, like a movie. It feels like a real, like, you know. Maybe I could pass for Harry Styles, but there's a chance that he might actually attend this thing and well, there can't be two of us. However, there is a dinner at the gala. Somebody has to serve Anne Hathaway her bowl of soup, and it may as well be me. But unfortunately, it's not quite that simple. There are no job listings to join the waitstaff at the Met Gala. Waiters get pretty unprecedented access inside the event, so they try to avoid hiring people who just want to use the job as a free ticket in the door. Word on the street is that there's a four-hour audition, then another four hours of training, and then assuming I pass all of that, the prospect of me actually being becoming a Met Gala waiter is still not very high. Everyone who works the event is selected by an outside caterer from within their internal team. Their website has a section to submit your resume, but unfortunately, you can't just apply for the Met Gala. It's just a spot to join their team, which is what I need, but like, judging by their pretty massive client list, they're probably gonna need waiters to cater tons of events between now and May. And I live thousands of miles away from New York, so it's not exactly convenient for me to fly back and forth for every one of them. But it does seem like my best bet to get inside. So I strategically waited until exactly two months before the Met Gala to to apply. 
I just got a response from the catering company. I invite you to schedule an in-person interview. Shit. <laughs> on Wednesday at our New York City office. That's three days from now. And I'm in Texas. I, I don't know. I am I really gonna fly across the country for a 10 minute interview? As I awakened from my beauty sleep, I saw the Big Apple and remembered that while I'm in the city, I want to leave as small a footprint as possible, so that way no one can figure out what I'm really up to. Now normally it wouldn't be a problem going incognito in New York City, there's so many people, but I've actually started to get recognized more often in public for my TikTok videos. The last time was at my dentist's office, and it was by my dentist, but the point still stands. Which means I either need to wear a convincing disguise this whole trip, or come up with a reasonable alibi alibi to post on social media so that no one who sees me on the street will suspect anything. Today, I'm flying to New York just to eat a single slice of pizza. Anyways, I flew to New York just like the stars. On Spirit Airlines, somebody did get arrested at the gate, which delayed getting off the plane by 45 minutes, so I had exactly three hours to make it to the interview. Unfortunately, I got distracted by a giant mural for the Met Museum, and I frantically hopped onto the wrong bus to the city, which I kid you not, dropped me off outside where they were filming a literal movie on the sidewalk. So by the time I finally made it onto the subway to go downtown, there was maybe an hour until the interview. Before I came, I actually read some advice from a former employee who said that because this is a fancy catering company, the hiring manager is likely to ask you about the grapes in champagne. So I tried my best to remember what they are as I headed to the interview. I really don't think this is gonna go very well. I probably have a better chance of getting hired to become a Ghostbuster. Actually, should I? Next video? Oh my god, the interview is in four minutes and I can't even find the place. I walked around the block three times. I'm looking for a very specific address that is nowhere to be found. It turns out I'm just an idiot, and the place was across a giant pedestrian bridge I somehow missed. But luckily I did make it. Barely, but I did. All right, I just got out of the interview and oh my God, it went amazing. So I very specifically said, I'll be available starting in late April. And he said, oh, that's actually really interesting. We have a big event with Vogue around that time. I wonder what that is. But there were no questions about what grapes are in champagne. I actually can't believe it. I thought it was gonna be the worst 10 minutes of my life and, and it ended up being really good. The guy said they hire mostly actors and models. So I get the impression that for them, it's more about your looks than your skills, which means that if I do get the job, I must be beautiful. So how it works is that you tell them your availability and you're basically on call for that time period if they need you for any jobs. Also the four hour audition is just a rumor, but at least for the Met Gala, there definitely is training involved. He described it to me as a choreographed event with long hours and many rehearsals in and out of the museum. So while I was in New York, I decided to check out the Met for myself and see exactly where the gala takes place. My goal was to visit the Anna Wintour Costume Center, but the Met website has this completely useless map system that's supposed to help you navigate the place since it's so big. So I tried following this thing and ended up circling the museum multiple times. I was going up and down all these stairs, across literal Egyptian temples. And finally, when I stumbled upon Van Gogh's self-portrait for the third time, I decided to ask one of the security guards where the costume exhibit was. And she informed me that it doesn't actually open until May, which I guess makes sense. I still couldn't even find where the entrance to it was. But while I was talking to the guard, I remembered hearing somewhere that the Pinocchio puppet from Guillermo del Toro's Pinocchio was on display for a limited time. So I asked her about it, and it turns out it was on display at the MoMA Museum, which I failed to realize is an entirely different art museum in New York. The theme of this year's Met Gala is in honor of Karl Lagerfeld. His signature look was black sunglasses and high-collared white shirts, which to me doesn't exactly scream Met Gala, but in an attempt to educate myself more on his designs, I visited the world's largest Macy's, where they actually have an entire section for his line of men's clothing. There were hundreds of people in the store, but I was the only one in the Karl Lagerfeld section. I'm not sure any of the items on the rack have ever been purchased, the employees seemed shocked that I was actually looking at them. However, it is this year's dress code, and by the time you're watching this, there will already be discourse online about who did and didn't adhere to it. But while I was in the city, I became aware of a mysterious man
man who I believe is known as Cash Money. And a friend of mine said that there was a chance that Cash Money could get us into the SNL after party, which if you don't know, is another exclusive celebrity event that the public knows very little about. It's held at a secret location in the middle of the night after Saturday Night Live, and this week's host was Jenna Ortega. So of course it would be a great opportunity for me to get a taste of what's to come at the Met Gala. We hopped on the train at 1 a.m., which is way past my bedtime, but we were all excited to mingle with Wednesday herself at this after party. Except Cash Money failed to tell us where it was being held. We were literally waiting for the address in the middle of Manhattan so late that we witnessed the clock skip ahead for daylight savings time on March 12th, while standing directly across from a billboard for the Back to the Future musical. We literally waited so long that we time traveled. It is four in the morning. We did not get into the SNL after party. But the only thing better than going to a party with real celebrities is going to one with fake celebrities made of wax at the Madame Tussauds Wax Museum. You made it to the SNL after yes, party. Yes, did. It's an odd location to start right in the heart of Times Square. There was actually an entire section dedicated to the Met Gala, and for once, we actually were on the list. Some of the figures were so incredible that it's almost disturbing. <laughs> they put nose hair! Please, that's so funny. We have to see if everyone has nose hair now. Rihanna has no nose hair. This figure is amazing. This is the best one. Do you agree? It's like really good. Yeah. And others were not so great. <laughs> they didn't label this as the horror section. They said music. Jesus Christ. And I got to meet Met Gala curator Anna Wintour. She famously really hates taking selfies. I've never taken a selfie and I don't plan to start now. So naturally, I took a bunch of selfies with her. <laughs> the whole time, I couldn't help but wonder if this would be my only interaction up and close with the stars. But little did I know what had actually been sitting in my inbox the entire time. I'm sorry, I just woke up. I was on this trip for um, five days and apparently I failed to check my email because... <laughs> Like, one day after my interview, I got an email saying I was accepted. I literally had no idea. I would have completely missed this email, but Gmail <laughs> put the thing up. It says, you should follow up on this email from five days ago. Oh my god! And possibly the best part is that I found out on my birthday. And what better way to spend your birthday than by completing the mandatory harassment training to become an employee in the state of New York. They offered me to work all sorts of dinners, legal defense fund galas, still not the Met Gala. But even if I wanted to accept one of those jobs, the literal second any job is posted, by the time I click the notification, it says all slots for this shift have already been filled. I guess I just greatly underestimated the amount of employees that are competing against me for these shifts. So let me tell you about my wonderful daily routine for the last couple weeks. I wake up, spend all day with my phone by my side waiting to be the first one to click the invite to work the Met Gala. Then I brush my hair so that way I'll look good in my dreams about it when I go to sleep. I intentionally waited to apply, but looking back, there were really no benefits to doing that. Because it's possible that they already filled all of the Met Gala slots and I just have no idea. But as time went on, I started to get nervous. Stories about the Kardashians getting disinvited were in the press, and if they aren't allowed in, why the hell would I be? And as the days went by, I began to accept the fact that maybe this was all just a pipe dream. I tried distracting myself by going to see Taylor Swift on the Eras tour, which totally worked. I even got a selfie with her on stage, which I definitely wouldn't have been allowed to do inside the Met Gala. <laughs> But as I'm recording this, we're officially less than a week away from the Met Gala, and it's very likely that all of the shifts have already been filled. So I can hope and pray that someone cancels and I can take their slot, but it's not looking great. Like I said from the start, this is an attempt to go undercover, but it wouldn't be a good attempt if I wasn't actually there to try. So right now, I'm headed to New York. Okay, I'm literally driving to the airport, and I just got a notification that they want me to work. I got a shift request from the catering company saying they wanted me to work an event that was literally located on the same street that the Met Gala was gonna be like two days before. So at this event, I did coat check. Every single one of my coworkers was invited to work the Met Gala, so 
To say I felt a little bit left out was um, an understatement, but I was able to talk to somebody at this coat check who was actually able to get me on the standby list to work the Met Gala. Obviously there's no guarantee that I was gonna get the job, so my backup plan was to pose as a member of the paparazzi. So on Sunday, the day before the Met Gala, I took the train over to the Met Museum and they were already setting up for the event. They had the big white tents up that the red carpet is under, and part of the museum was actually closed because they were setting up for the gala. But they didn't do a great job concealing the areas that were being set up. I literally was able to stick my phone through a gap in the barrier they had set up so that nobody could see inside. I also stuck my phone inside the tent where the red carpet was gonna be, and they were setting it up. By the end of the night Sunday, I hadn't heard anything, so I went ahead with my plan to become a paparazzo. So I arrived outside the Met Museum at 8.30 a.m., which is about 10 hours before the Met Gala was supposed to begin. We were there so early that the news actually showed up and did a story on how crazy we were to be outside the Met Gala so early. And then celebrity Michael Rappaport showed up. He was upset that he didn't get an invite to the Met Gala, and like, same. But the highlight of the morning was when this random woman showed up and started disparaging everyone waiting in line. <laughs> with your dark, ugly roots and your oh, you're It got pretty ugly and she came back more than once. Children, my nanny, my tutors. Anyways, this whole time they were setting up the red carpet, but they actually had excess carpet, which they cut up into scraps and threw to everyone waiting outside. I'm gonna cherish this piece of carpentry for the rest of my life. When it finally got closer to the actual red carpet starting, it got really crowded. There were people literally stacked against each other for blocks. I was on the barricade, so I had pretty much like the best possible spot to be in. But it got crazy. Multiple people fainted. Someone brought a taser and literally started tasing people. Police were like, oh, don't worry, we'll take care of it. And it's like, no, I am gonna worry. I don't want to get tased. They did actually take care of it, though, so... Thank you. The first person I recognized was the queen herself, Anna Wintour. And then right after, Dua Lipa showed up. But as time went on, it started to get really crowded, like, on the actual red carpet. So much so that it became very difficult to spot the celebrities. Someone would yell, oh my god, it's J-Lo! Then we'd look, and no one could even see who the person they're pointing to was. And then finally, we do see the person, and it's not J-Lo, it's Rita Ora. I feel like 90% of the guesses from the crowd as to who we were looking at were not right. Like, the crowd was chanting with their full chest, Cardi B, Cardi B, and it was Kim Kardashian. <laughs> we had no idea, and it wasn't even that we were far away and couldn't see. It was just so crowded that it was hard to look at the celebrities as individuals rather than just like a member of this massive like crowd. I don't understand how there were so many people on the carpet. Anyways, what also didn't help is that they didn't close the road in between the sidewalk where we were standing and the actual red carpet on the Met Gala steps. So we'd have like 30 seconds of like a perfect clear view and then two minutes of like a green light and buses, taxis, vans going by. There was even a converted school bus throwing its own Met Gala. I would say that the most surprising thing is that the celebrities had to wait in line to actually get onto the carpet. Little Nas X probably waited 20 minutes in the same spot before he had his chance to like actually go on. While the celebrities were waiting, people were chanting their names. Some celebrities were super nice and acknowledged all of the fans. Others did not. But the celebrity that caused the most chaos was Rihanna. So it was like 9 p.m. All of the celebrities had already arrived except for Rihanna. Somehow a lot of Rihanna's fans knew the hotel that she was staying at. At this point it was like 9.45 and Rihanna had still not even left the hotel. And finally after like an hour we got a report that Rihanna had left her hotel and gotten into her vehicle. And then like three minutes later we saw the vehicle arrive because the hotel was right down the street but then she stayed in the vehicle for another 30 minutes. It turns out she was changing outfits between her outfit that she left to exit her hotel and her outfit that she wore onto the Met Gala carpet. So finally she did show up, and I must say, it was worth the wait. Rihanna did acknowledge the fans, and I think by the time she finally made it up the stairs into the Met Gala, the event had already ended. I may not have had the opportunity to serve the celebrities tea and then spill it to you afterwards, but I did have a great time, and who knows, maybe one day I will become a waiter at the Met Gala. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you soon for another exciting video.